Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 down, is so emphatic. One of the most revolutionary passages of the scripture. Ask. Let's read it together. I want to go. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Now, have you ever been in a situation that you ask and you have been asking? and yet you have not received if you really sit down and think if you say you've never asked and you are not received um, you will be lying every one of us every child of God there are things we've asked God for for years and yet we don't receive it there are many reasons why either answer to prayer is delayed or prayers are not answered at all number one condition that cannot be shifted no compromise for your prayer to be answered to be considered number one you must be begotten of God sonship number one condition the first thing that God does in order to get you to fit into his plan and enjoy his rest and have your prayers answered your wishes met you first of all have to be a daughter of the kingdom a son of the kingdom you need to be born again now being born again gives you the right of sonship so we talk about in the issue of God being your father so the first condition for prayer answer is that God has to be your father because when God is your father it means you are his son and if you read that scripture down it says which of you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone so it is a spec the expectation is that the one who prays must be a child of God that the one who prays I didn't mean church goer I didn't mean somebody who loves church I didn't even mean somebody who serves in church that person must be a son so the whole condition the foundation for your prayer to be answered answered to come responding to your prayer you must be operating in the sonship of jesus christ because it is only the son that the father listens to the father listens to the son the father responds to the prayer and the cries of the son it is in the sonship in belonging to god that you have rights for your prayer to be answered and when we talk about prayer to be answered you don't need to pray for rain to fall pray rain falls for everyone so that's not the level we're talking about prayer answered you don't need to pray for the sun to shine but there are certain things that do not go to everybody certain things that if you if it comes to you something that happens to you you know this one is a response from the god who loves something that lifts your life makes your life sweet something that gives you rest something that makes your case different something that sets you apart there are things like that whether it is in the area of marriage or health or whatever or you know you know freedom from battle settlement of issues debts and all that it does not just happen it happens to people and most of the time it happens as answer to prayer for believers foundation for that is that you must be gotten of God you must be gotten you must be begotten of God you must be a son or a daughter in the son of God if you understand me shout hallelujah the second point is that you must you must you must you must have your motive clean but before I talk about the issue of motive, there is something in that first point of being a son of God. You see, you can be a child of God, but you are a child of God who disobeys. You can be a child of God, but you are a child of God who rebels. You may have accepted Christ, but you don't please the Father. You may have accepted Christ, but you don't love Him. And just guys say, if you love me, obey my command. It means if you are disobedient, it means if you are rebellious, it means if you go your way, even though you are a child of God, it means you don't give pleasure to God. You don't love Him. There are certain things that cannot come to you. There are certain things. The scripture says, you will delight yourself in the Lord and he will do what 
Oh, come on. He will do what? He will grant you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. It means you will bring delight to God. Your pleasure will be in God. Giving God pleasure. Your pleasure, your excitement will be giving God honor. And he will give. So that's what sons, what children, what sons and daughters do to their parents. They bring them joy. When your son passes exam well, when your son does home chores well, when your son behaves well, you want to give him something beautiful. You want to reward with something. Something Oh, generally the child lives under the roof generally the child eats food but there are certain things you will not be happy to give that give to that child if that child doesn't please you if that child doesn't honor you if that child doesn't love you that is the dimension it's not just enough to say i'm a son i'm a daughter in the kingdom i'm a child of god pleasing the lord living to please him living to honor him to love him these are conditions for prayer to be answered if you understand say i have heard it number two your motive it is james that talks about issue of motive you don't have because you've not asked but you ask with wrong motive you ask to enjoy in selfishness you ask to live in selfishness let's let's refer to james chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 this is about the second point for prayer to be answered. Can you put that scripture, James chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Next verse, be quick. You want something but don't get it. You kill and covet but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. You do not ask God. You do not ask God. A lot of people don't ask God for anything until they have problem. Young women who want to marry especially. I don't have anything about young women. God, God knows I don't. See, a lot of young women, I just, I love him so much. But you see, you first of all settle. Then if you have so you have already taken, you know, and wanna, that's it. You want it. You don't ask for it before you start. When you have trouble, that is when you begin to fight. So your prayer becomes like prayer, crying, and you want to move God heaven with tears. When you ask, you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives. Wrong motives. If you ask a, a typical young woman, why do you want to marry? All my mates are married. What nonsense. I think God is in heaven to just to make you one of those who marry. What is the purpose for marriage? Wrong motives. Why do you want to drive a car? I want to show my friend the other day insulted me because he has a, a car. God bless me with my own car. Why? Let them know. I'm more young. So you you want to. Uh, with wrong motive that you want you may spend what you get on your pleasures the kingdom of god is not involved the building of the kingdom on earth is not involved the honor of god is not involved it's about you wrong motives so if you have to use these two things to test the number one point in your prayer do you find out whether your life pleases god or what you are asking god for will it please god will it honor god is it about the love of God? Number one. Number two, the motive. Why do you why do you want? Why do you ask for what you are asking God for? Because if you pray with wrong and corrupt motive, you may pray till you die, you will not have it. God doesn't work that way. God doesn't sit in heaven to grant you the gifts for competition. The competition. Like you go to families, there are some families that Ackman would all would all would all you would all would all, would all and others. You would all fear. Then they begin to marry. Before you know it, big competition is happening in the family. I want a pan with go making one would come a to guroka, a to guroka madi ponokonokonokona can fend to so all the prayers so that about seven finikit yeki tiakban. So the prayer with hostility, prayer with Iba, prayer with wrong motive. You are not happy for what somebody has been blessed with. 
you are praying in response so that at least you can be like or be more, more, more you lifted, you, you'll be greater than the other person. Those are wrong motives. If you check your spirit, so you ask the Holy Spirit, X ray my motives. Say it with me, Holy Spirit. I didn't hear it. Say, Holy Spirit, X ray my motives. Yarare men men me. Yarare. You see, you need to come to terms with the indebtedness book. So I said the hidden motives. Those are some of the things. Number two thing that. Number three thing that we consider why prayers are not answered. When you pray against the will of God. And the fourth condition or the fourth reason why prayer is not answered is what I want to share with you in this service. But I'm connecting you with these other three so that you, you have a sense of where we are coming from. The will of God, you see, everything that just guys said, I did not come to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me and to save all. So Jesus Christ, as the Son of God, did not come for his own will. He submitted his own will to the Father. The scripture says in Philippians chapter 2 that he emptied himself. He let go of his own will. He let go of his ego. ego. He let go of his own everything. And took so he lived for the will of the Father. If he had his own way, he would not have died on the cross. He died on the cross because that was the will of God. So your prayer must be in alignment with the will of God for it to be answered. Prayer must be in alignment with the will of God for it to be answered. So if you are asking God for, ma for a life marriage partner, sometimes God can actually speak to you or there can be somebody that God is bringing to you for marriage. And and you have your own egocentric plan and project and you want you want that and some people just say anything you want god will give you the scripture says if your son asks you for a stone you will not give a snake what of if your son asks you for a snake will you give a, a snake so that same scripture as jesus gets out whose father that the son will ask for I mean, the, the son will ask for bread and he will give stone. He will ask for fish and he will give snake. What of if the son is asking for snake instead of fish? Will the father give snake? No way. That means you have to find out every time what you are asking God for. Ask God, if this is not according to your will, please, Father, let your will be done. If you hear me say, Hallelujah. That is how Jesus won over the cross. He prayed three times and said, Father, if this is not your, if this is your will, not my will, but your own will. So prayer, a lot of people think they can use prayer to circumvent the will of God. I remember a young woman who came to me very desperate. I said, I love him. And he loves me. But there is this thing. There is this thing, you know, and all that. I really want, but I say, okay, have you asked God to let you know whether it's the will of God? Say, Father, don't go there. Let it be the will of God. Pray, tell God, let it be his will. Ah. How can you pray that your will becomes his will? Because that is what you want. That means you change the role. You become God and God becomes your servant. And that's what we try to do. Say, faith, anything you believe with all your heart, you will receive it. Anything within the will of God. So number one is the will of God. There is no way faith can change the will of God for you. Am I talking to somebody? Faith is not changing the will of God because sometimes people preach and make the word of God upside down. It's everything you truly believe. Just I said it. Everything you pray and believe with your heart that is already done. But if it is not the will of God, you better change your mind. Just say, act as it will. If it is not your will, continue with your will. Praise God. The will of God is a territory within which God operates. God rules the world with his will. Nothing can break his will. His will pre prevails in all things. His will prevails in all things and there is a scripture in in proverbs that i this is where we summarize and move to the point of today proverbs proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 put it proverb many are the plans in a man's heart let's read it together i want to go many 
are the plans in a man's heart but it is the lord's purpose that prevails so after all your plans if you want your prayer to be answered as a child of god who pleases the lord who honors the father who, who seeks his pleasure in all things you have to submit all your plan to his purpose that means after you have prayed you have to accept his purpose if you understand say i believe praise god now let's let's do something let's do this is something very beautiful the fourth condition for prayer to be answered and the fourth reason why prayers are not answered the number four thing growth and this is like so beautiful this is something that is sometimes not, not talked about at all when we talk about prayer the place of growth you see i have a daughter who is one year old I love her, but I cannot give her my truck to drive. My truck belongs to my daughter, for your information. <laughs> my car belongs to my daughter. But I cannot give her, no matter how much she cries, no matter how much my daughter fasts and prays, no matter how many people she sends to come talk to me to convince me, I will not hand over the key of my car to my daughter to go out. I can take her in my car and we go on a ride and she enjoys it. But she will not drive my car. Why? Not because she doesn't belong to me. That car belongs to her. There are things, in other words, there are things that the greatest prayer you can pray to receive is to grow into it. Please don't miss this. This is where we have a lot of trouble. And this is an area in, in, in Revelation that we don't talk too much about this. We tell people, receive it. If you believe it, you receive it. If you believe it, if you don't have money to fuel car, you don't need car. So don't believe God for car when you can't even maintain a car. You don't even have good shoes to wear. You can't even change your boxers. You can't pay rent yet. And you are believing God for a car. And yes, you find something is wrong with your head. That's not your need. So prayer will not make God give you a car. What? You don't need a car. You grow into a car. So because a lot of people just think it's your prayer. They spend one year. They say, I'm believing God. I'm believing God. I'm believing God for, a, for marriage. I'm believing God for marriage. I'm praying God to send me a very godly man. I'm believing God for a very godly woman. But you have not yet grown up to handle issue of serious relationship. So you don't, you don't pray for such thing. You grow into it. And by the way, so many people, if you are among those who are praying right now for marriage, you need to go and sit down, submit yourself for tests. Sorry, not HIV tests. Not Corona tests. Maturity tests. Can you handle a man? Can you handle a woman? Can you handle a home? Can you handle a child? Just being a woman is not equal to being a wife and a mother. You need to grow into the maturity of handling another generation. There are people who have children, they abandon them to video games, abandon them to child care. They go and give children to school and forget to go back in the evening so that people will be looking at you, then they will make calls, several numbers. And they say, oh, sorry. And they will quarrel with the husband. What happened? Didn't you go for? So you sat at home till 7 p.m. None of you realize that your son or your daughter is not at home. Am I lying? Go find out. Go to nursery schools. Children, people who abandon and forget their children, but they are watching movie. Watching movie at home. They are women. In years old, one and year. In years old, and in year. But in year, one door. They have not yet grown. Those are people, if God wants to give a special gift, He will not give to such a person. You need to grow into certain things. Now, prayers, I used to pray, God, do this, do this, do this. Certain trouble I went through. There are certain deliverances that no, I bind you in the name of Jesus cannot get certain demons out of your life. <laughs> Sincerely, I mean it. If, if you bind and get them out, 
as they are going through the door, the demons come. Why? You are not yet ready to depart from them. Your life attracts them every day. Your life gives them comfort to, to operate in you. That means certain deliverance in your life waits for you to grow. You grow to a point that that demon does not have a place in you. Jesus Christ says that the spirit of the enemy, the, the spirit of darkness, the spirit of this world has found nothing, nothing in me. So if the devil can still find something in you, no man of God's prayer will deliver you. As soon as you are delivered, before you reach home, the devil comes back because he can find something in you. He can find lust still operating in you. He can find envy still operating in you. He can find impurity. He can find wickedness operating in you. That means grow. So certain deliverances is growth. No matter how much you fast and pray, if you don't grow, that demon doesn't go anywhere. The main thing is to talk about this distinction between children and sons. The scripture says in 1 John chapter 3, First John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called what? Children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Go to NIV in that verse 1. Beautiful. It says, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. All of us are children of God. All of us. The word children in Greek is technon. Technon is, is somebody that is begotten by. Children of God means all of us are born of the Father. But if you don't grow from just being born again, grow in responsibility, there are certain things of God you cannot handle. We are children of God, but there is another script, there is another thing called sons. The scripture we read in, in Romans chapter 8. I don't know whether I'm talking to somebody. If I'm talking to somebody, say I can hear it. So a child is somebody begotten by another person. It's a matter of inheritance. It's a matter of ancestry. It's a matter of from my blood. Begotten of the father. That is it. But my daughter is my child. But my daughter cannot operate my account right now. She is not yet ready. My daughter is my child. But my daughter cannot drive my car right now. My daughter is my child. I cannot send my daughter on vacation to Dubai right now. My daughter is my child. But I will not send my daughter on vacation to Lagos right now. A time comes she can travel to anywhere in the world. The difference between now and then is growth. Am I talking to somebody? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 18 to 19 of verses 18 and 19. Let's in some ways try to wrap it up here. If you am there. Romans chapter 8 verses 18 and 19. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Praise God. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Those to be revealed, those who can change the world, they are not children of God, they are sons of God. The difference between son and children is that children are just begotten, but sons are those who are begotten, but they have grown into responsibility, they have grown in maturity, they have grown in authority. The difference between the son in the scripture and the child, technon and uyos. The Greek word uyos refers to mature son. The scripture says that creation, sickness, the problem in your father's house, the issue of people not getting married, it is waiting for the sons to be revealed, not children of God to be revealed. There are every family has a child of God, but very few families have children of God who have grown into champions. Those who can decide problem of marriage ends in my generation it cannot go to the hands of my children i finish it it is maturity it is authority it is responsibility it may just be the reason your prayer has not been answered because you are not mature enough to handle the things you are praying for maybe you don't have what it takes to handle the blessing you are asking god for 
maybe you are not big enough to fit into the hole that you are digging in prayer. Every Nigerian has a right, but not all Nigerians are lawyers. All of us are children of Nigeria. Lawyers are those, are those who have grown in knowledge and have been qualified to stand in the bar. Not all of us are medical doctors, though we are all Nigerian. So, issue of sickness is waiting for medical experts to be revealed, not children of Nigeria. That you are a child of God doesn't mean you can handle serious things. The transformation and the renewing of your mind. Maturity that can give you responsibility. The scripture says you are the light of the world. It's not children that will be the light of the world. These are mature sons and daughters. Who, the way, the way they marry, the way they raise their children, they shine. The way they are bosses, the way they do things, the way they go about things, people can see light shine. That's what creation is waiting for. That's what darkness is waiting for to stop in your family. Children of God who can rise into maturity, who can say enough is enough. Not because they are speaking in tongues, because they hear another person, but because they have the authority of the son. And they have the capacity to handle responsibility. Elijah asked Elisha, if you can see me. And Jesus Christ asked the two sons, can you drink of the cup that I will drink? That means there are things. Can you handle the responsibility of what you are asking God for? If you cannot, then you cannot be given. Rise. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday, 8.30 a.m., Champions University, and subsequently, Extended Family Assembly, 10 a.m., aired live on Planet 101.1 FM, Uyo, Venue, Goshen, Kilometer 14, Mwaniba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaimom State. Join us live on Facebook and YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and via the Christ Radio app. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Partners and Friends of Grace Family Outreach. You can be part of this Grace Revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0907-383-8742. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.